Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 8 with me Craig Barton. Now in the world of maths teaching, much like in life itself, often the simplest things are the best and I absolutely adore the idea behind this resource. The resource is called Grid Games and it's been kindly uploaded by AshMC2K1. Now probably the best way for me to describe this resource is to show you an example. So I've cracked open the negative numbers grid and it looks like that. And you can probably see where the name Grid Games come from because it is a grid and it's rammed full of questions about negative numbers. Now the uh, author of this resource suggests using this as a whole class activity and it comes with a guide here. So here you go, split the class into two teams, bang that grid on the board and the aim is to get as many squares as possible. If a team gets one wrong, the question passes over to the other team, colour in the squares as you go, one who has the most squares wins. And I think this is the key bit. It's simple, the pupils love it, and it doesn't feel like work. And I know that's, it's kind of one of those things, you don't want to admit that you're trying to trick the kids into work, but God, I've, I've used it many a time myself, and it, it's a successful strategy. Now, this is also crucial. Feel free to adapt and change the rules to suit you, because it's such an adaptable resource. And that's what a lot of the comments from users have been saying. They, they love its simplicity, and they love the fact that they can adapt it. So let's go back and have a think about this. There it is. So I can certainly imagine splitting it into two teams. But I can also imagine this working as a bit of a paired game, um, giving the kids a grid, one between two, and getting them playing against each other. Or even, to kind of get the fun of a board games night at home, somewhere like that, get them in teams of three against another team of three, discussing strategy about which square to go for. And if they get it right, colour in there, square in blue, then it's over to the other team. And I like that idea of giving... Uh, Teams a bonus if they get three squares in a row, a line of three, because that then brings in a bit of tactics about which square you should go for and gets around the uh, kind of problem of the kids only answering the easiest questions at, at the start. I was also thinking, could we twist this around a little bit more? And I like this idea of getting the kids to decide which questions are easiest and which questions are hardest. So after I've played this game a few times, I'd probably challenge the kids to do that. Write me down which is the easiest question there. Write me down which is the hardest. Write me a sentence to explain why. Really get them to think about the mathematics behind it. And I, why not let them create one of these grids themselves as well um, for homework activity? And then how good would that be if the kids then brought them in and then we could play them um, with the whole class? Perhaps give each child a different topic to design a grid for. And there's your GCSE revision done there. Let's play grid games for a couple of lessons. Someone's designed one on fractions, someone's designed one on indices. Let's get the whole class playing and revising as we go. So as I say, it's such an adaptable resource. There's one on uh, numer rules, of, rules of algebra and numerical indices <laughs> there's nothing stopping you using this with uh, year 13 further mathematicians or year 7 SEN students as I say it's such an adaptable and amenable resource there's loads of them in grid games too you've got all those bit of fractions percentages simplification bounds everybody's favorite topic there and uh, algebraic substitution and if that's grid games 2 it'll be no surprise to you that there's an original there it is there grid games 1 and a whole bundle of them there as well a bit of converting units decimals to fractions expanding brackets loads to play with I've tried this with my year sevens this week and they are loving a bit of grid games so I'd strongly advise you to check it out and I'm also going to put a little request out here if you do use it and you you find a successful strategy uh, that makes it go down really well in the classroom or something that you get the kids to write or, or some moment that happens would you mind just sharing it in the comments box uh, below this video because I think it'd be really nice if we could start really sharing ideas uh, with each other about how to get the most out of these resources so there it is grid games one grid games two Hope that was useful and I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Bye for now.